Welcome sa ating channel mga kaibigan at andito ulit tayo ngayon para sa worth 30k plus to 40k PC build. But the main thing na pag-uusapan natin dito is about the processor Ryzen 5 3500X and of course the video card from Zotac GTX 1650 Super and the GTX 1660 Super. So yan po yung mga uh, combo na gagawin natin for this worth 30k to 40k PC build. And then malamang tinatanong nyo sa akin mga kaibigan, bakit another 30k to 40k plus PC build na naman? Dahil nga po, by the year 2020, most likely you cannot find the Ryzen 5 2600. And eto na po yung kanyang bagong kapalit, Ryzen 5 3500X in terms of pricing. Dahil ang counterpart talaga ng Ryzen 5 2600 is yung Ryzen 5 3600. Pero dahil nga nag-sale, nagkaroon siya ng lower price lately. Pero yung mga yun is sale price lang po and paubos na po yung mga Ryzen 5 2600. Kaya nga po sabi ko nung mga previous videos, grab as fast as you can. Pero luckily, AMD did release another processor that is on par if not better processor than the Ryzen 5 2600 for our next builds in the year 2020 or by next year. Pero as of now, I think you can now grab this processor kasi sa mga local stores, most likely nagkakaroon na po sila ng mga pa isa isa or mga few stocks on shelves. So let's do this mga kaibigan. And of course, para sa mas marami pang videos like this in the future, feel free to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below para sa mga susunod yung era request. Let's start with the assembly part. For more detailed, I have uploaded a previous uh, 30k plus uh, PC build before na meron tayong step-by-step -step guide. Ngayon, I will not be anymore uh, doing that with this video kasi nga na-feature na natin po yung mga kaibigan. We will focus more on the hardware dun sa processor and the video card and the components na pinagsama-sama natin para mabuo itong worth 30k plus to 40k PC build lalong lalo na this coming year of 2020 dahil ang Ryzen 5 2600 pumasok lang naman po siya dito sa ganitong klase ng bracket of pricing dahil nag-sale dahil on clearance sale kung makikita nyo po 3400G is a quad core with 8 threads Ryzen 5 2600 is 6 cores with 12 threads and this new Ryzen 5 3500X is 6 cores and 6 threads And of course, uh, Ryzen 7 3700X is uh, kasama rin sa pag-uusapan natin. Pero how worth it itong processor if your build is 30K to 40K plus budget? Now, why no Ryzen 5 3600? Bukod sa wala tayong sample para sa benchmarking for this uh, 3600, I think it will not uh, be included anymore kasi medyo malayo na yung pricing niya. Nasa 10K plus siya eh. Ito kasing 3400G, 3500X, and uh, 2600 nasa pricing na halos magkakadikit 1k difference lang sila and uh, nasa 8k and below so yung uh, 3600 nasa 10k plus na po yun so medyo i-disregard muna natin siya for this uh, conversation kasi pag 3600 ang yung magiging processor automatically you will be at a 40k to 50k plus budget so wala na po sa bracket natin ng 30k to 40k uh, bracket ngayon bakit meron 3700x? well, naisama ko lang po siya dito Kasi gusto ko lang po ipakita sa inyo yung significant difference ng uh, quad core at saka 6 cores at saka 8 cores. So kaya na isama po siya sa ating uh, comparison chart. Ngayon 3400G versus 3500X ara na 8K and below pricing. The FPS advantage is too far. And by looking at the difference sa Ryzen 5 2600, sobrang dikit. Dito natin makikita that more cores play significant role sa gaming din. But does same story apply from 6 cores to 8 cores? Well, yes. However, it's not that significant from 4 cores to 6 cores. Parang sa monitor yan mga kaibigan eh. 60 Hz going 144 Hz, mahahalata mo yung difference. Kahit na uh, amateur gamer o kaba, kumbaga hindi siya techie na gamer, mahahalata niya yung difference ng 60 Hz to 144 Hz. But from 144Hz to 165Hz or 240Hz, di na masyado. Even those uh, professional gamers barely uh, 
notice yung difference. Kaya nga po, merong tayong mga nakikitang videos online na sinasabing um, ang hirap i-distinguish kung alin dito yung 240Hz, 165Hz, 144Hz. Pero kung 60Hz and 144Hz or 60Hz to 120Hz, halatang halata na nila na ito yung mas mabilis, ito yung mas maganda or mas mataas yung refresh rate. Okay, going back to the processor, ganun din. It also applies with our processors. Now, why AMD still released that 3400G kung wala naman palang silbi? Well, may silbi naman siya. It's for gamers who want to avail processor pero medyo short nga lang para sa GPU. But while waiting to have a dedicated GPU, at least they can still use the processor integrated graphics for gaming. But the good thing is they released 3500X at the same price with 3400G. Which is the bad thing on the 3400G kasi yung pricing is the same. So expect na in the next few months mga kaibigan, 3400G may drop the price at a 6K plus or uh, something uh, mga nasa ganun mga kaibigan. Kasi aagawin ng 3500X yung market na yan eh. Kasi ganito yan. Kung ikaw yung consumer, nakita mo yung difference na sobrang laki in terms of real world performance sa gaming. Baka uutang ka na lang ng pambili ng video card para mag 3500X ka na lang instead of going 3400G. Kesa maging atat na bumili ng processor tapos may kaprice lang na ganito kalayo yung difference in terms of performance, di natin may iwasan yun. Marami ang kakagat sa 3400G at 8K and below pricing, pero out of the 100 potential buyers, like for example, 100 yung uh, balak bumili ng 3400G, and dung nakita nila itong comparison na to, do you think that the 100 potential buyers of 3400G will still go to that kind of processor? Automatically, medyo mahahati yan. They will just go for the 3500X, Most likely, maghihintay na lang sila ng konting ipon pa para sa video card or mag na lang sila para sa video card just to go for the 3500X. Kasi ang layo ng difference eh. And for AMD to gain back that 100 potential buyers, the only way that they can do is to drop the pricing. Ngayon, pwede mo rin isipin na mag Ryzen 5 na lang ako kasi 12 threads pa, by spec sheet, numbers and figures, it may look Ryzen 5 is the go-to and clear winner. But actually, on our benchmark, real-world performance, it may show na it's the processor we may love for the price. is so good dahil nga nag-sale, pero naungusan na po talaga siya ng uh, mas bagong Ryzen 5 3500X. Let's accept na it's an older processor with more cores and threads, but 3500X, newer architecture, more cache, things we don't usually check, Aside from the cores and threads, panalo po talaga si Ryzen 5 3500X dun sa real-world result or dun sa benchmark result. Konti man yung agwat nila pero actually malaki na po yan. Kasi if we will recall, lumabas ang Ryzen 5 at a 10K plus pricing. Nagiging dikit lang dahil nag-sale. Now if you think this is not worth it upgrade, then you should buy the real counterpart of Ryzen 5 which is Ryzen 5 3600. Kasi yun talaga yung kapalit nitong Ryzen 5 uh, 2600. Itong 3500X is just the budget version that gives privilege to budget consumers who can avail 10K plus processor. So, kikita natin dito that 6 cores, 6 threads will be good enough for us to have an FPS very close enough to match with the 8 cores 3700X. Yan po yung dahilan kung bakit nilagay ko po yung 3700X dito. Kasi kung makikita nyo po mga kaibigan, the difference between 6 cores to 8 cores, sobrang dikit po talaga. And uh, eto nga po, kung gaming lang naman ang pag-uusapan natin, why not? ba? Diba? Now let's move on to the video cards. For 30k to 40k budget, the best we may recommend is still GTX 1650 Super. For 30k plus and uh, for 35k, go 1660 Super. This is the best combo at this budget, lalo lalo na kung... Uh, You are into streaming, gaming, multitasking, and editing. And of course, if you are really in a tight budget, every less na makakatipid ka, kakagitin mo. As long as it's a brand with good reputation and product reviews. That is why I use the Zotac um, video cards in here. Kasi it's a bit cheaper compared to the video cards that I've used before. And sa matitipid natin na few hundreds or thousand, medyo mas may mailalaan pa tayo for other components or for better uh, motherboard, better uh, SSD. Yun yung dahilan kung bakit pinili ko na mag-Zotac 
para kahit pa paano makatipid tayo. And uh, makikita din naman natin na yung kulay niya is very neutral. Wala na yung kinaiinisan ko dati. Because yung downside ko talaga sa Zotac dati is yung yellow accent ng kanilang video card. Pero it's good that they now stick with a very neutral color na black. And tinanggal na nila yung yellow. And in terms of uh, gaming, of course, benchmark won't lie. GTX 1650 Super and GTX 1660 Super show us a very good FPS uh, average with very high to ultra settings pagdating sa mga games. And since mostly na nilalaro ngayon is mga battle royale games like Fortnite, so eto nga po, ipapakita rin natin yung epic na settings pagdating sa graphics. And makikita natin dito na yung kanyang FPS is very decent even you will go GTX 1650 Super or GTX 1660 Super. If you question me, bakit hindi ako nag-RX 580, bakit hindi ako nag-ganito, wala na rin po kasi sila in the market on the year 2020. Kasi nga papalitan na rin po sila ng mga newer video cards from AMD like RX 3500. So, kaya yun yung dahilan kung bakit hindi ko na rin pinili na yun yung magiging video card ng ating build kasi pa-face out na po sila. Ngayon, bakit ko naman i-recommend ang isang bagay na pagdating that time, nabibili ka na ng build na ganito is wala ka naman pong mabibili. So, I just chose what is available on the market as of now, the GTX 1650 Super and GTX 1660 Super. Besides, yung benchmark naman nila is uh, way better compared to other competitors or other brands. Ngayon, kung tatanungin nyo naman ako kung uh, maganda rin siya for streaming, of course, uh, the videos that I have captured are uh, videos na simulation like I'm doing streaming kasi nare-record ko po sila while that game is running. So makikita nyo po dyan mga kaibigan na yung FPS naman po niya is napaka-stable kahit na nare-record natin yung mismong gameplay. So that is a perfect example na yung streaming uh, capability ng ating uh, unit is uh, very good or hindi tayo magkakaroon ng problema in terms of streaming. And then for editing, yes, I tried to render video via Premiere comparing it to Ryzen 5 at a 30K plus uh, budget and the difference is nothing but the same. So dito natin makikita mga kaibigan that more threads of 2600 is nagawang tapatan ng less thread but newer architecture ng 3500X. I tried to overclock yung 3500X hoping I will beat the 2600 in terms of overclocking pero it still falls on the same. Uh, time frame. So, nakita natin doon mga kaibigan na walang masyadong magiging impact ang overclocking sa ating uh, 3500X not unless you will be going for 3D rendering uh, builds or projects like uh, you are an architect, you are an engineer that is the time that you will really have an advantage in terms of overclocking. So, I managed to overclock the uh, unit at a 4.2 GHz 1.325 volts and level 1 LLC with a SRAC motherboard. By the way, the lower the number pag SRAC, the higher like it's a turbo settings in terms of the LLC of Gigabyte. Yun nga po, as I said earlier, if you are into gaming, streaming, uh, video editing, overclocking is uh, not a significant advantage din sa mga project nyo. So, wala siyang magiging advantage. Better use or enable the PBO. So, yun na lang po. Enable nyo na lang po yung PBO para at least ma-maximize nyo yung potential ng ating processor. Ngayon for the SSD, I choose the Team Delta RGB Max. So, yan po yung bagong uh, SSD from Team Group. It comes with this uh, glossy finish sa kanyang ibabaw and uh, meron siyang parang screen which is actually uh, glass uh, finish and uh, it's glossy pero nag-illuminate po yan ng RGB. Well, um, it may looks a bit more expensive compared to other competitors pero actually yung pricing kasi ng team group talaga uh, which is dyan sila nakilala is sobrang mura so mapa, may RGB man yan or wala yung pricing niya it's a lot cheaper compared to other competitors and uh, hindi naman po ibig sabihin na dahil mura yung kanilang products is pangit na po because uh, their products which is uh, very well known naman sa mga PC enthusiasts especially sa mga modders na pumupunta sa mga competition and we have seen that a lot of them are using team group and then for the RAM I use the Vulcan Z same RAM that I used with my previous 30k plus uh, PC build since yan po yung isa sa mga pinakamura or pinakasulit na RAM na pwede nating uh, mahanap sa ating market and then for the chassis the Techware M3 White so yung Techware M3 White po yung pinili natin chassis kasi meron siyang black lining sa kanyang tempered. So, a chassis that you may choose kung either white or black yung components na ilalagay mo sa kanyang uh, loob or yung pagsamasamahin nating i-assemble. And ang uh, maganda kasi sa chassis na to is hindi siya white all the way. So, ang problema kasi with other chassis na white, 
na everything is white. Hindi mo na talaga malalagyan yan ng black component. Kasi pag nilagyan mo ng black component, ang pangit na ng kanyang distribution of uh, aesthetics. Like for example, black sa loob, white sa labas. Medyo masagwa sa tingnan. Parang hindi siya bumabagay. Pero with this white Techwear M3, sa lining ng kanyang tempered glass, black. Yung kanyang rear part, black. And then yung kanyang top, front, and then other side, white. At the same time, sa loob ng uh, chassis, white din. So, kumbaga, medyo balance lang yung kanyang pagka-black and white. So, if you put black components inside, maganda pa rin sa tingnan. If you put white components inside, maganda rin sa tingnan. So, ibig sabihin, it's very neutral chassis. And of course, for the motherboard, yung pinakamadalas natin ginagamit, B450M Steel Legend. Ayun, pinakasikat na motherboard. Favorite motherboard na Micro ATX this 2019. And then for the power supply, I use the 650 watts. Pero you may just go for the 550 watts. Good enough na po yun mga kaibigan. Pero naglagay lang ako ng 650 watts for the future proof. Like for example, in the future, you will be using a higher video card. At least kahit pa paano, yung power supply mo is nakaabang na po mga kaibigan. Alright, so that's it mga kaibigan. Hopefully nagustuhan nyo ang ating recommended PC build na 30k to 40k plus by next year and uh, eto nga po is uh, nakakatawa lang or nakakatawa lang isipin that AMD is really penetrating each price bracket sa ating market for next year so dito talaga natin makikita that they are really listening to the customers in the past few years for releasing another processor another budget processor na medyo it may hurt some of their product lines pero may kanya-kanya namang uh, uh, niche Like the 3400G, sabi ko nga sa ating review, it's for those guys na wala pang pambili ng video card. Pero hopefully, they will price cut that uh, processor dahil sobrang mahal niya to be on par with this 3500X. Alright, so that's it mga kaibigan. Para sa mas marami pang videos like this, feel free to comment down below. And syempre, like nyo na rin yung video kung nagustuhan nyo. And subscribe and share this on your social media accounts. Para mas marami pa tayong mga kaibigan na matuturuan at matutulungan pagdating sa kanilang mga next builds in the future. Alright, so that's it guys and thank you so much.